All right, so recap, here's what I have so far. And what I want to do now is start working with drums. Um, so what I'm going to do is go in and I'm actually going to build my own drum kit. Um, I don't do that too often. I use a lot of machine drums and stuff like that. But um, I figured I'd show you how I do it in machine. Um, so I'm going to go hit this disk button over here. It's going to load up um, everything I have. And I have a favorites folder loaded up here um, under my samples. Um, I have a lot of samples I found on the internet and stuff. These are all free. Um, I think they're all legal. hope so. Um, but let's take a look here. First thing I like to do is start with some kick. I'm going to do a bass drum, nice spelling, and um, this is going to be previewing them in my headphones, I don't think it's going to record um, the way I'm recording this, but I'm just going to go through and find a kick sound that I like, and once I have one, um, you can either drag it onto your first sound or just hit the enter key. And now you can hear it. So it's going to take some work, but we can do it. So what I'm going to do now is go in here and start putting some effects on this kick. So I kind of want to boost the low frequencies here. So I'm just going to use machine EQ and put a small boost. You can make it really a big boost to hear what you're actually doing. And then cut it down a little bit. And you can see that's clipping. Oh, um, so I'm going to do is transient master is cool because you can add some attack and it's also a limiter. Okay, I like how that's sounding quite a bit. And um, let's have a kick. You can hear it in the context of the mix. So I'm going to play everything back and just mess around with the kick drum. So I'm getting some pretty bad clipping there. So I'm just going to take the, um, the master fader down a little bit. Turn up my mic. So I like to play it in context to make sure it sounds good with the mix. Um, that kick is sounding pretty good. So I'm going to find a snare drum. Whoops, that actually loaded into my kick, so I'm going to undo that. Hit the slot for sound too. So that sounded good in the high frequencies, but I want a little bit um, of a lower frequency snare. Ooh, that's cool. So I'm going to load that um, into this third slot. And then when I play them together, you can hear. That sounds pretty cool. Um, so this is my lower frequency one. And what I'm going to do is do some EQing on here. So I already have the, the high snare, so I don't need very many, very much, very many high frequencies. I'm um, very much in the high frequency. And then I'm going to boost a little bit of the mid. And then what I can do is um, take the high snare and... Um, Take some of the lows out of there. I don't think there's much to begin with, but just to make sure. Oh. So now when I play these together, you have a fuller snare sound. Um, sometimes I like to pan some of these. Um, here's your pan. I'm going to take this one, put it to the left, take this one, put it to the right a little bit. And now I want to make one sound that's a combination of those. 
So what I'm going to do is choose a new sound. And then this is sampling mode here. So I'm going to go into sampling, choose internal, um, make sure we're just on group C. And I can resample this combo snare onto a new pad. So I'm just going to hit start. And then here we go. I like to play it a couple times so I can choose the best one. Um, so here we go, you can see my three snares here. And what I want to do is go into the edit menu and start um, playing them back. Okay, so um, when you have that picked out, you can go up here and then hit truncate. Um, I don't think that showed that on the screen recorder, but there's a small um, down arrow that you click to go into the edit options. Um, and I'm going to take the end point, drag it over, and then go up and truncate again. And you can see there's some space between that, so... going to cut that off as well. So there's my new snare. I'm going to take these, right click, reset, right click, reset, don't need those anymore. Going to copy this onto this one, and then reset this one. So You can hear how when I played on the pad, um, it has some weird um, envelope going on there. So to fix that, go to the sampler tab, click this little arrow, amplitude envelope, and I'm going to turn on one shot. So I have my kick and snare sounding, so let's hear those in context. All right, so that sounded pretty good. Um, next thing I'm going to do is look for some hi-hats and other drums. And what I want to do is add a hi-hat now. So I'm going to go up into my sample library again. Um, and then find a hi-hat. So I'm going to load it up on um, sound 4. And it's really loud. So I'm going to take the volume down a little bit. So again, I just play it back and um, play the hi-hat a little bit and make sure that everything is sounding all right. Um, now what I want to do is add a clap. Um, so I'm going to choose some different samples here. And I like this clap over here. And that's a lot louder than everything else. So I'm just going to take the volume down and then play it back and see how everything sounds. finger drumming, but um, sounds pretty good. I like it. Um, so I think this is almost ready to record. I'm going to do a cool thing on the snare here. Um, this is some of the more advanced stuff in machine that I figured out how to do. So um, if you click this arrow, you have this option on here, velocity destination. And what you can do is assign the velocity of the pad to certain things. So by default, it's assigned to volume, which makes sense. Um, if you take this away, the snare is going to be loud, no matter how hard or soft you play it. So 
I'm going to keep that there. What I'm going to do is set this to cutoff. And what this is going to do is change the cutoff frequency of the filter. Um, but you have to turn on the filter, so what you can do is go up to effects and filter. Turn the filter on, I like a low pass one. And it's kind of hard to hear when it's quiet, so I'm going to take this off again. But you can hear when I play softer, um, some of it's cut off. And when I play louder, the high frequencies are back. So that's cool, and you're going to do some snare roll. Um, it's not like the most super noticeable effect, but um, it definitely adds a little bit of a subtlety there. So I, I like this. Um, what I might do is add some reverb on the snare. Um, I like metaverb. I'm not going to keep this um, too too noticeable just to fit because this clap is really reverb -y. And I think those are sounding good enough to start recording. So um, here we go. Going to choose. I'm going to get out of sampling mode, just click that and choose my first pattern like usual and I'm going to try to record just the hi-hat kick and snare and see if I can get it right first try. Sounds cool. I like that. Um, you can see how varied my hi hats are. Um, what I like to do is just select all of them. If you take the low velocity ones, you can kind of like smash the top ones and then bring all of them down so they're closer together. clap too. So I'm just going to um, turn recording on up here, play it back and add some claps. Sounded pretty cool. Um, I like that, and um, I think that's a good place to move on to the next part. And it sounds like this. What I'm going to do now is add one more clap. Um, maybe. Let's, let's put it in, see how it sounds, and then um, do some compression on the drums. But first, I'm going to go through here and try to find a clap sample that I like. Um, let's get these back on. And I'm um, going to go to this next sound here. Um, and just load up different things and see if I can find one I like. Kind of like this one because it has um, some some of those lower frequencies in there. And what I'm gonna do is just play everything back and see if I can fit this clap in. I'm um, kind of gonna do a hit before the snare, um, something a little a little interesting. Something like that. I'm gonna record it, see if I actually like it. Um, so here we go. Um, 
So what I'm going to do now is take the volume down a little bit so it's not too too obvious. And then I want to add some reverb on this so it um, fits in a little bit better. So I like how that sounds. And what I'm going to do now is um, go on my drum group here. Oh, this may be a good time to name these. Um, just double click and then type whatever you want. Um, and I'm going to do some compression on the group. I really like this solid bus comp comes with complete nine. So I'm going to load this up and um, do some quick settings here. So you can see there's quite a bit of gain reduction here. Um, that's a little bit too much for me. So I'm going to take the ratio down and then um, move the threshold. I'm also going to jack up the makeup a little bit. And this is pretty um, pretty transparent. It's just bringing up the levels a little bit. Um, I'll do it on and off so you can hear what it sounds like. Alright. So hearing everything together sounds like this. Everything that I have recorded so far is sounding pretty good. I'm going to think we're going to move on to a piano as a lead. And the best part is it's for free. So moving on.